Spot is a constrictor. Pythons are all constrictors, which means that they are not venomous. So on the outside chance that he would grab a hold of me, I wouldn't have anything to worry about because he is incapable of in injecting any venom. Again, he is a constrictor and he subdues and kills his prey by squeezing. Okay? Now, type of animal that he is. We know he's a snake, but snakes are classified as what kind of animal? Would we, would we think this is a bird? Reptile. Yeah, very good. They are, they are considered reptiles. We know they're reptiles because <coughs> they are covered in skin. Now, and I've already had a few people notice this earlier, he seems very shiny, very wonderfully colored, and people have commented that when they look at him, they think that he would be wet and slimy. Reptiles are not wet and slimy. They are totally dry. This is one of the reasons they were able to get away from the water and were able to reproduce in such dry and arid reasons such as the desert. There are reptiles that live in the desert. Now as it happens, Spot, the ball python, is a tropical species. He prefers the, the tropical rainforest where it's warm all the time and nice and humid. He prefers to exist right around 80, 85 degrees is his favorite temperature. Uh, so here in the Cincinnati area, if he were to escape and get outside, uh, he would not last very long, especially in weather that we have today. Now, one of the reasons I brought him in, uh, because we are talking about the evolution unit, is he has, as an old world snake, meaning from Africa, he has a unique characteristic. It's called a vestigial structure. This structure is left over from when snakes' ancestors were a legged lizard kind of animal. And if you've ever seen a monitor lizard or the Komodo dragon, have you ever noticed the tongue on a monitor or a Komodo dragon? The tongue's always going in and out, correct? And why, why is the lizard doing that? To regulate its temperature. Not to regulate its temperature. It's smelling. It's smelling. Uh, some people say tasting. Okay, technically, he is smelling, but his sense of smell is different than ours. Our sense of smell is lined in our nasal cavities. He has a special organ on the roof of his mouth. It's called the Jacobson's organ. And this organ, when the tongue collects particles out of the air, he brings the tongue back into his mouth. As the tongue goes across that organ, the organ then senses the particles that the tongue has collected. So the tongue is nothing but, think of it as a net for particles in the air. It collects them, brings them into the mouth, touches them to the Jacobson's organ, and that tells him what's out there. And his sense of smell is, is very good, better than ours. That's one of the ways he hunts and finds his prey. Now, his vestigial structures that I mentioned earlier are back here, and for those of you that are standing close, I, uh, I can let you see them. But if you look back here at the base of his tail, and uh, I'll let you take a quick peek. Do you see those claws right there? Yeah. Yeah. Let me see this camera. I don't know if the camera can see him. But the, uh, he has claws right there at the, at the base of his tail. Now, how many people here have ever heard of a snake that's had claws? We have very few people. There are a couple hands in the air. But very few people have ever heard of a snake having claws. And a lot of the African pythons have those vestigial claws. They're left over. They serve no purpose. They're just there. And they're what's left over from what used to be their hind legs. Uh, it's believed, based on the fossil record, that the lizard ancestor, or the lizard-like ancestor of the snake, adopted a more burrowing lifestyle, subterranean, lived underground where big legs and big shoulders got in the way. They, that's how their body became elongated. After generation after generation after generation, they finally lost their legs because the ones with the smallest legs did better in the tunnels. Natural selection kicks in. You do that for a few thousand years. The ones that can maneuver better in the tunnels are the ones that pass that trade on to the next generation. So we end up with a reptile that doesn't have legs. At some point, these ancestors came back out of the ground, got back on the surface. Well, their legs are gone. You can't really get them back. So 
they just adapted to being able to maneuver on the surface. And if you've ever seen a snake, they can get pretty much anywhere they want to go with no limbs. I'm afraid to say this because I think my wife is going to watch this and I don't want her to find this out. But I was in the attic the other day and I found a snake skin in my attic. So, dear, if you see this, I apologize I didn't tell you. Because she's not a snake person and if she finds out that we had a snake in the attic, then I'm going to have to go up there and try to figure out how to get the snake out. But she, so I was keeping that from her, but I guess now the cat's out of the bag. Uh, so how does the snake get in my attic? Good question. The point is, they don't need legs to get where they need to go. They are very well adapted to their environment. They were able to figure out how to get where they need to be without any legs. Okay? Now, does anyone have any questions about spot, about snakes in general, or, or the vestigial claws? Yes? About how fast does he move? As far as his crawling ability? Um, you could easily outrun him. Uh, I think the fastest snake on record is about seven, eight miles an hour. So they're, they're easy to catch on foot, except for they're getting in and out of all the tiny places. But as far as their speed, this one would be very slow. He goes nowhere quickly. That's the, the beauty of the design. He is ectothermic or what most people would call cold-blooded. So his body temperature changes with the environment. So it's a comfortable 72 degrees in here. His body temperature is going to be roughly 72 degrees. That's going to slow his metabolism down, and that will slow him down. That's why he's so comfortable being held, because my hand is warm, and that's warming him up. And he, he wants to get his body back up and get his metabolism back up. Now, when it comes to his strike, he may be slow getting from A to B, but if he's hungry and his favorite food source gets close, his strike is lightning fast. And he will reach out, grab his prey, pull him back in, throw a couple coils around in a, oh, under a second easily, I mean, literally in the blink of an eye. When I used to have him in the room, one of my favorite things to do is all everybody, oh, we want to see him eat, we want to see him eat. And so I would open the cage, and I would give him the rat. And now a lot of snake people will tell you it's not a good idea to feed snake live prey. But I would one or two times a year I would let this happen. So I'd put the rat in or the mouse in with the with the snake with the snake, and I would back up and I could watch. And I didn't have to see the cage. I would know exactly when the snake made his move because the entire group of people around the cage would all jump and yell all at the same time. Just a collective, ooh, every time. Because they were so they knew it was coming, they knew it was coming, and boom, it was over. So from here to here, he's quick. And he can strike about half of his body. He can reach out about half the length of his body, which is going to bring up the next question. I know somebody's going to ask. Yes? Oh, what is the length? Uh, he's about four feet. So on average, your females are going to be a little larger than males. He is a male. Um, he is right at about four feet, which is pretty good size for a male. He's been well cared for, well fed, um, so he's he's a good sized male. Um, Excuse me, is Sarah talking in class? Uh, no, she is not. Thank you. You're welcome. So for males, a little bit bigger. Uh, this particular species, about six feet, is, is pretty much maximum size for them. So of pythons, especially in Africa, uh, they're on the smaller side. They uh, prefer kind of the, the tropical regions, but you'll find them also sometimes out in the open, open areas as well, not the dense, as much as the dense rainforest. Yes? Are the colors you see limited? Their colors? Yeah, they, yeah, they are fairly limited. Their, their vision is not their main sense. Uh, we talked about their sense of smell, but one of the best one of their, their best and least known, and the, a lot of you may not realize this, but right underneath his nostrils, nostrils are up here, right above his upper lip he has a row of pits, and they are heat sensors. He can sense body heat to within a limited range. 
So even in total darkness, he's able to find his prey. They obviously specialize in warm-blooded prey. So even if he can't see, he can still feel the body temperatures out in front of him. And that enables him to be able to hunt even in total darkness. Yes? How do snakes reproduce? They, are, they reproduce sexually. Uh, they have males and females. Uh, the males keep their reproductive organs inside their body. Uh, when, it's, when they do find a mate, then they will push the organ out, fertilize the female internally, and then go on about their business. Uh, the old world snakes are egg layers. <coughs> they will deposit the egg somewhere, and then that's it. Their parenting skills are done. They, will not, they do not care for their young at all. So a baby snake is born with everything that he needs, hopefully for the baby snake with everything he needs to survive, or she. Any other questions? No? All right. Oh, we got two more. Yes? Yeah, um, what about water? Can it breathe underwater no. and swim? They still have, uh, they still breathe with lungs. Actually, snakes really only have one useful lung. This helps elongate their body, because if you look at a human body, the chest is one of the, the chest and shoulders, one of the biggest, largest, widest parts of the body. So one lung is very small, hardly used, and the other one is very long and thin. It helps uh, elongate their bodies. But they do still breathe air, so they have, even the snakes in the water have to come to the surface to breathe. Again, because they are ectothermic or cold-blooded, <coughs> they don't need as much oxygen as we do. So they can stay underwater for long periods of time. Mr. Seward, do you have a question? What's, um, what's a snake's um, biggest predator? Well, it depends on the species of snake. Um, this guy, when he's young, he could have any number of predators. There are other snakes that eat snakes. Any snake that has the term king in front of it is a snake eater. The king cobra eats other snakes. The California king snake eats other snakes. Um, hawks, eagles, other, other reptiles, lizards, monitor lizards, uh, jackals, coyotes, bobcats. Uh, anything, depending on where you are in the species, any of those animals can be, can be predators of snakes. Uh, once they get big, though, the big ones, you know, your, your African rocks and your anacondas and the Burmese pythons, once they get big, they're pretty much at the top of the food chain. And then they only have to worry about us. Yes? About how many eggs do they lay? I uh, believe the ball python is going to lay between 12 to 20 eggs usually. Um, it all depends. And in the wild, it will depend on how healthy they are. The more eggs, the, the better chance that one or two will survive. Ms. Cole? Normally, how big are the eggs that are uh, For a ball python, they'll be close to a chicken egg, maybe a little longer, but not quite as big around. Anybody else? All right, great. Uh, thank you very much.